Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to be part of uh, this uh, important webinar uh, on COVID-19 preparedness and response to adults on vaccine procurement and acceptance. So I'm going to present here uh, our experience as continent, especially uh, what we as Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we have so far uh, are done. I just want to take you through uh, quickly the out, uh, outline of my presentation. After an introduction, I will go through challenges threatening COVID-19 vaccination in Africa, the factor associated with acceptance of vaccine, COVID-19 vaccines, the factor negatively associated with acceptance of COVID-19 vaccine, the measure to mitigate hurdles and drivers of vaccine uptake, and I will conclude. As introduction, I can say that COVID vaccination uh, is an ongoing worldwide effort to vaccinate large numbers of the people against COVID-19 in order to protect them from the disease and control the rate of infection, redu uh, reduce uh, severe outcomes, and get back uh, to the normal life. Um, most of the African countries had a delay in uh, initiating the COVID-19 uh, vac vaccinations. Uh, especially when we compare to the other regions across the world. And the goal of the immunization exercise in the continent is to vaccinate over 70% of the African population uh, in order to reach uh, the herd immunity. Over the years, the vaccination programs are usually faced with challenges in Africa because of the numerous factors that I will uh, uh, mention some here. We know that uh, the major challenge is threatening, uh, threatening the, the, the success of the COVID vaccination rollout uh, in most of the African countries, include the slow onset of the vaccine uh, vaccination uh, exercise. And I will, I will give you uh, the reasons why, the limited resources that the continent is facing, the concerns around the vaccine safety and uncertainties, uh, storage requirement and regulatory hurdle for vaccines, so the limited shelf life of COVID-19 vaccines, and also the hard to reach communities in the remote uh, 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 settings, use of different type of existing vaccines and war and conflicts. So this is just what I mentioned to you in a schematical uh, format uh, here. We know that some of the challenges are here in the middle and of course the different uh, challenges that I mentioned are surrounding this the circle here. So uh, the key challenges for the uh, COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing and supply, we know that is one of the key uh, uh, challenges that the, the continent faced, especially on the availability of, of uh, materials. Um, the most critical factor is in regard with the COVID-19 vaccine has been the availability of the materials. Also, um, where uh, suppliers can't supply, they, they were making priorities. So it was very, very, very difficult uh, in, in the case of this emergency supply chain management, uh, which is new uh, for uh, the industry and uh, it is evolving. Uh, suppliers usually are used to having known predictable demand, but it was not the case uh, in the COVID-19 and the suppliers also uh, setting priorities, companies are receiving notifications like uh, for the, the single use uh, uh, materials uh, to be uh, reconfirmed and reroute re re deliveries. So uh, in that case, there, there, there is a risk, the risk of uh, over ordering and creating uh, a safety stock which created inefficiency across the industry. This is in terms of um, uh, supply. Increasing capacity demand also was one of the challenges uh, faced, despite the capacity being available around the world, the issues of intellectual property, regulatory factors, and also the quality challenges. Um, this challenge also is, the, the, the one of the challenges is how uh, to become more flexible, we have uh, how existing available capacity is used and maintain in a balance across the whole uh, uh, product portfolio. Uh, the biopharma industry also has gained experience and uh, efficiency over the past three decades, but nothing would have prepared it for the dramatic impact of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. 
one of the key challenges for the bear farmer uh, was also uh, managing and balancing uh, the overall available uh, capacity. Uh, increasing capacity also demand, despite uh, no that one I just mentioned it, the process and the supply chain inefficiencies, uh, rather than uh, building and qualifying new facilities or outsourcing another strategy to increase capacity is to improve process efficiency and robustness. And this has increased due to the accelerated development and approvals processes are not developed for mass uh, uh, volumes uh, during the COVID-19 that we have seen. The same may be also said about improving uh, e efficiencies across the, the supply chain. Um, the, 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 the another key challenge was the demand for coal uh, storage equipment. Rigorous coal storage requirement for housing COVID-19 vaccine, especially for the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, have created a global demand for the ultra uh, uh, coal freezers. And the absence of this hindered its distribution to areas lacking proper facilities, especially here uh, uh, in, in Africa. And uh, this is uh, this this has also forced the countries to step up coal storage infrastructure and delivery logistics in readiness for vaccine rollouts as temperature uh, exclusion are a concern. Now, uh, we are going to touch quickly the factors associated with acceptance of COVID-19 uh, vaccines, especially the experience that we have uh, on the continent. And uh, this uh, is a result of the, a survey that we have conducted. We know that significant association between age category and vaccine acceptance, especially um, is, um, we have mostly a positive association from the 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 the, 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 the elderly people are eager to accept the vaccine compared to to, to to young population having good knowledge about covid-19 vaccine and or uh, its preventive measure was was also positively associated with vaccine acceptance higher education level appeared to uh, positively affect covid 19 vaccine acceptance, a positive attitude toward COVID-19 vaccine is associated with an increased vaccine acceptance rate, better vaccine acceptance among participants with a story of chronic uh, uh, disease such as uh, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, etc. These people uh, accepted easily COVID-19 vaccine. The high perceived the risk of getting coronavirus infection, perceived severity of the disease, and also the perceived benefit of COVID-19 vaccine are positively associated with the COVID vaccines and acceptance uh, from the study that we, we conducted and also having good practice of COVID-19 preventive measures, access uh, to the media also uh, made uh, a difference. The more exposed people are, uh, they, 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 the, the more they are also uh, the COVID vaccine and previous interaction with some uh, someone who is infected by COVID-19. Also the, 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 the urban residents having children being a physician or health professional uh, uh, and being single also is associated with uh, uh, COVID vaccine uh, uh, acceptance. Now we are going to, to see the factors that negatively associated with the COVID-19 vaccine especially uh, acceptance of COVID vaccine is lower among individuals who were not compliant with the public health uh, uh, and social measures. Uh, we remember all at the onset of the COVID-19, uh, there was no uh, pharmaceutical interventions, but we were uh, obliged to enforce public health and social measures. But those who really uh, were not compliant uh, are not really eager to, to, to detect the COVID-19, perceive and clear information by public health authorities. Some of them also they reject because they said even the public health authorities are not very clear on the messaging. The perceived low risk of getting COVID infection, some people completely exclude themselves that they are not at risk, especially the young populations, and not sure about the, the tolerability of the vaccine also poses a big problem. So supporting this evidence and multi-country survey conducted by the Africa CDC, uh, team revealed that the majority of the 
the vaccine hesitant population are concerned on, on the, the vaccine safety, uh, especially. So uh, how to mitigate uh, these hurdles that we have just uh, seen? The first one is uh, at the planning stage. It is very important that continuous planning and timely execution of such plan is imperative to achieve a successful vaccination uh, programs, especially uh, in Africa. Adequate planning uh, for a vaccination program incorporates a national strategy that enables and an disrupted vaccine procurement, storage, movement, distribution, and administration to entangle populations. And also, uh, as the vaccination progresses, uh, planning ahead for the next phase is imperative to repeat the impressive results that were gained uh, early in the first phase and to correct the mistakes recorded uh, in the ongoing uh, uh, first phase. So it is a kind of iterative process. Um, the second is the funding. Uh, the ongoing COVID-19 immunization exercise of this large magnitude that needs all the general population to be vaccinated require enormous funds. And uh, over $12 billion are needed by African countries to purchase over 1.4 billion doses that will vaccinate 70% of the African population uh, in order to achieve the herd immunity. And uh, while around 70 billion are required for the continent to fund the whole vaccination program. And also the majority of the African countries have struggled to raise these funds. Uh, like, uh, while countries like Uganda, Kenya, and Nigeria uh, needed to pass series of supplementary budget to get the fund needed uh, for the commencement of the first phase of the vaccine. So, so that was at the initial phase when the vaccines were made available and also the potential vaccination fund could be raised through internal revenue such as the passage of special intervention budget and specific. And what I have not mentioned here also, it is the, the existing facilities at the World Bank, et cetera, which also help countries to procure the, the need. Importantly, COVID-19 vaccination is a, is a health intervention that will benefit all sectors. And effectively financing the vaccine exercise will educate economy, uh, will, uh, educate economy getting back uh, up uh, globally. Um, the other one, the third measure to mitigate uh, uh, these hurdles is uh, especially the risk communication and community engagement. We have seen the myths, misinformation, disinformation, discouraging vaccine uptake uh, spread really very fast. And uh, this dispelling this wrong information uh, enable inefficiency rollout to achieve massive uptake by the targeted population uh, on the continent. Uh, that is why uh, we need a holistic community sensitization uh, to over uh, to, to overcome uh, this challenge. Vaccin vaccination promoting messages also needs to be relied. Uh, to the general public by radio, television, and all uh, different social uh, media, newspapers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, especially in uh, all using the all languages that, is, uh, that are easily understood by the population. And also in the rural and uh, the remote areas, the limited access to internet and uh, the frequent electricity uh, outage message promoting COVID-19 attacks should be relied in, search, uh, in, in uh, churches, mosques, traditional functions, and at the large uh, gatherings. In addition, making use of local champions, uh, such as respected fig figures and celebrities in the dissemination of the vaccine promoting message uh, uh, might result in higher vaccine acceptance rates in the public, and we are seeing that one. Uh, in uh, deploying our saving life and li livelihood uh, programs, and also the those entire intersectoral partnership would help to improve the acceptance uh, of the COVID-19 vaccines via provision of more human and material resources needed to tackle the COVID vaccine hesitancy on the continent. The next one is access in the humanitarian uh, crisis settings I mentioned as one of the, the, the biggest challenges is also uh, the, the, the different uh, uh, conflicts. I'm not going into details, but it is extremely difficult. Uh, many countries are facing uh, uh, 
some uh, humanitarian and also war challenges on the continent. And it is very difficult to reach such settings. So we need to take into account that one. So for us, uh, uh, before concluding, drivers for the vaccine uptake is one, to create an enabling environment with all the, the measures that I have mentioned earlier. Using the social influences, it is extremely important and also to motivate uh, the people, especially the young people uh, to uh, uptake. And what, one of the things that we have done as Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is to launch a program called Bingwa. Bingwa means champion in a Kiswahili language, and uh, everywhere in, on the continent, we are uh, putting uh, in place an army of young people uh, who are champions to mobilize the, their peers to adhere and to uptake vaccine on the, on the continent. So in conclusion, due to the continent inability to produce vaccines for COVID-19 and other vaccination materials, um, we know that international and regional partnerships like uh, with COVAX and ABAT is our own uh, initiative and Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, World Bank, etc. Uh, was imperative to procure vaccines and other uh, medical materials at lesser rate uh, with the limited time. Uh, once the vaccine uh, are procured, national authorities with a partnership with private sector help uh, the plan layout and the standard logistics for the safe, equal, and timely distribution of the vaccine into intending districts and communities. Uh, individuals in the community are the hand of uh, and the receivers of the vaccines uh, in the vaccination chain. So it is extremely important that we take into account their needs. We listen to them uh, in order to increase the, the, the vaccine uh, uptake and the integration of the COVID. 19 vaccine into the regular vaccination framework like uh, uh, EPIs as a requirement might help to fortify the public uh, care system and the public health care system and promoting the increasing of the acceptance of the COVID-19 vaccines and improving also the overall well-being of all individuals dwelling in Africa. So that, that is the end of my presentation and thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Thank you.